What is up, guys? I'm Jordan. Welcome back to the Rise of the Witch of Doom. Let's go. And, well, we're going up against Renward, or, of course, the Toronto Turtle Bells and the Blazing Squid. And for being week two, it was really, really fun to go up against Squid again. We faced each other in the UBL, and um, I believe that game was the strongest game, at least for me in that season. Um, because of the niche ideas I had here and uh, or there but I also had some niche ideas versus him in this season here uh, the thing was um, Blazing was really really proud that he um, inherently actually designed a team with a lot of intimidators as you guys can see on the screen we have Mega Gyarados which of course before Mega Evolving could very well have the Intimidate Landorus which always has Intimidate and of course Arcanine which usually have Imitate uh, what that means is that since I have a Thunderous we're gonna abuse that just right. Um, I'm gonna at least say one thing before going to the game itself or going to the team planner. I made some changes for my team. I actually dropped Jirachi, I dropped Drampa, unfortunately, and Nidoking King and uh, Superior, and added Flygon, uh, Heatran, and Venusaur, and uh, another Pokemon, Stami. Um, it made much, much more sense for my team. Uh, primarily actually Stami made a whole lot more sense for my team uh, mainly because it does have spin and that's gonna be extremely helpful overall and just that's my mantra somewhere down the line I need a reliable spinner and losing Yurashi well it's unfortunate but I never used it like I had always a reason not to bring it so inherently it was actually the better case to actually just drop it all together uh, so go over my team here I'm Go with rather standard here. We have a Mega Absol here with a fully physical. Actually, I do believe we only have Thunderbolt. No, we have only Fire Blast. We have Play Rough, we have Knockoff, and we have Super Power with the Flamethrower. Um, should be able to deal with the majority of this team. Should be able to deal with Jarlos depending on the set. And um, overall, Absol can be very important here. Uh, no, not Play Rough. Iron Tail, I mean. Sorry, my, my mistake. Uh, Iron Tail is only for DNG. Uh, then we have Thunderous, which is supposed to be Defiant. It isn't in this game. I actually messed up, but it is a bulk up set with actually Thunder Punch, um, Smart Strike for Dainchi, and uh, Fly. That's all I needed. Uh, Life or variant of um, regular Venusaur with Hidden Power Fire, Slash Complete Rain, and Growth. Stami being Stami, um, physical, analytic, or fully offensive, I mean. With Tire Pump and whatnot. Heracross, Flame Ward set, standard, and Nine Tails with the, I do believe I had uh, Heat Rock to be able to um, capitalize on um, the chlorophyll aspect of a Venusaur. So, that said, I wasn't necessarily that happy with this team, but I knew Thunder was going to be a key here. And, um, well, I'm trying to think what my initial thought was with this game because I was I was just stressed out because we kind of I wouldn't say stalled it but we had failed to time each other so I at the start I didn't necessarily know what I built for and I got a rather tough lead and uh, I'll just say it as it is in the beginning here I'm not feeling it but I think at least I was able to somewhere down the line uh, try to fend off against Blazing Squid, which is absolutely a fantastic battle. Of course, check him out, he's gonna be linked down below. So, with all this said, of course, let's go into the game itself. So, from the get go, I decided to lead off actually with the My Mega Absol just to, well, get some type of momentum. Um, the thing was, um, Rainbow Hero Blazing started off with uh, the NG, and while I could risk the Iron Hail, Iron Tail, Iron Hail, and knock this out, I have a very big chance of missing and Absol is very crucial this matchup, so inherently I decided to switch out, just I didn't feel it as a switching Stormy on the potential rocks as my opponent could break the Diamond Storm. And it does a lot of damage. Uh, I'm absolutely KO'd next turn by that, so I decided to go for Hydro Pump just to get the ship because the energy is such a defensive, well, massive mon as a whole, so I thought it was worth the sack. It's kind of shaky, I'll definitely say that, because it meant that Arcanine was now a, a lot stronger. And I'm um, still debating whether or not that was to play. Uh, so bringing Alpha Max here, and um, looking back at it, I should have gone for knockoff. But uh, I decided to go directly for a close combat, I believe. And Landers, of course, is thriving here. There is really no question about it. As um, 
<laughs> yeah, it didn't it didn't feel good at all. Uh, definitely not in the beginning. And uh, Leonard's course is out speeding. I couldn't risk him being a C fly set, so I'm switching out and go into Nine Tails, potentially sacking it depending on his play. Um, but for my money, it was either Stone Edge or Fly or C fly, and I'm not going down anyway. Uh, but he actually forces switches out going into his Arcanine. This turned out to be a lot worse because, well, I mean, it's his flare beat splits are boosted as hell, and I know that. I'm standing here with open toxic, thinking that would be a proper response. Well, it isn't. It, it absolutely isn't. The only merit we get out of this is that we find out that he's scarfed since my Nidalus is now speeding. Uh, but also, I guess a big and good part is that we get some good residual damage towards Alcanine, which could have been a really, really strong threat because we lost Tommy that early. So with that in mind, I am sacking here across. I'm feeling, or at least I get like all those residual damage back, which is always a great thing. Um, Heracross was not going to be a crucial member for this matchup anyway, so I felt really good just sacking it off as I can freely come in with uh, my Argon Crow, my Venusaur. Now I could have gone for Grove here to rate to his Scarf, but I didn't. Um, I think I went directly for Sludge Bomb, they were neutral to save play. And um, it does bite me a little bit because, well, had I got for Grove, I don't believe he had any switches that could have survived any hit from me. Uh, so here we bring in his Ferrari, which is the scissor, and I go for him for fire, of course it's the Aquaberry. And due to me not going for Grove, well, we lost kind of an opening there, didn't we? We barely survived that one. It's, it's not annoying as he goes for U-turn and doesn't get a really, really good hit on me. And he brings him to his Landers. Now, I'm still faster than a Scarf Landers, if that's the set. So I wasn't worried, but I knew I couldn't KO with. But Giga Drain actually does a fair amount of damage. Um, looking back at it, had I had Solar Beam, yeah, that would have been nicer, but that was still dying to um, potentially um, the bullet punch that would follow from Scissor. So with that in mind, we lose Venusaur, we we are losing a lot of Pokemon early, <laughs> but at least this game I really clean situation to go with my Thunders, because Rox isn't on the field, uh, so bulk up is rather safe. Um, and besides that, I do realize when I set it out that I wasn't green ball, realizing I am not defiant. I brought the wrong thunderous, or I had the right set in the thunderous, but it's the wrong thunderous I edited on. Uh, the only merit to get out of this is that I at least get to plus two defense, and as you guys can see, that means that this landers has nothing on us, and that is incredible. That means that this landers is not a threat towards us. Uh, as my thunderous switches out, it goes to his gyros. Definitely baiting me for the Thunder Punch, and I, I should have probably realized that myself. But the thing is here, I can't do anything risks here, because in theory, if he goes for a, just one Dragon Dance, he will outspeed me and potentially um, flinch me and stuff like that. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go directly for the Thunder Punch. My opponent called this out, goes for Landris, he's definitely doing the switch in and switch out again, as is I don't have any hazards on my own, because I have decided not to bring them. Uh, it also means that he can switch for the longest time as much as he wants to in this matchup, which is not good. Um, so he actually now goes to his Arcanine, and since I am a double plus three though, I want to do plus two, but I'm neutral at my attack. I do decide to go for another bulk up, so at least plus one. I have one really good positive thing coming out of this uh, that I am happy with, and that is that due to me being prankster uh, and him being toxic, I can stall him out. And uh, since we know he's Scarfed, my intent is to just do that, to get into myself as strong as possible Why not necessarily care about the damage output from the Flare Boots. Because now we are plus 3, and yeah, that, 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 I can live with that type of damage. I felt Thunderous here was really, really, really annoying for my opponent, as it very well could be my last response towards his whole team. At this... Point, I, I should be telling you guys that I was on the edge of my seat knowing that had I been defiant I could have swept long ago uh, effortlessly because of course the fire was always boosted with the attack but now I still have lost it so that my damage output is well and far from ideal and his switch-ins are well not too far in between each other so I was kicking myself over this but looking at it right now yeah I was in a good spot, I had nothing to worry about, or at least so I thought, as 
it's, it keeps on switching. Like, I'm not smarter than anybody else. Like, I went for fly here thinking that if it's gonna get neutral, at least I get neutral on Jaros. Uh, but he can still switch this out, and that's what it does. does. And I probably lose about a, a few tons of momentum here, considering given certain, certain stance as uh, we knock out Sister, that's final. But would you allow Invicta Vault to come in freely? And would you allow Jaros to come in freely? And since I'm only at the plus one right now, there is really nothing I can I can want to KO the Vicar Vault. Uh, I do outspeed it. Uh, I was fearing it could have been a spec set and that could very well knock me out if the flying is knocking this Pokemon out. But it is agility set, so that has me um, more relaxed because that means the Funnel Pokemon won't KO me at least. Um, but I guess the negative part is that we aren't able to knock him out, but it also has a very Luckily, it wasn't something like Figgyberry, it just was Citrus, uh, because <laughs> I don't know how much this fly really would have done um, had it recovered more HP than that. But yeah, Thunderbolt isn't, or it still does a lot of damage towards us, but I was definitely in range of surviving it since we knew it wasn't Specs anymore. Um, and we knock out the Vicavolt. Um, I could have missed fly, I mean, that's an option, but at this point, we only have Jardos left and we have Landers left. Uh, the thing I'm fearing the most is whether or not I get a waterfall flinch on me after Mega Evolving because Intimidate here means basically that our Thunder Punch will do a little bit over 50% and that's about it. So it is a 2 kill no matter what the situation here. I can't want to kill it for sure. As um, uh, we go for the Thunder Punch, surprisingly I do score a crit here. But as I said in the grand scheme of things, that itself didn't matter. All what it comes down to is the Dragon Dance and of course the most superb thing, which is can I take a Waterfall without being flinched? Because I'm getting flinched here, I'll lose this game. As it goes for Waterfall, I'm scared, I'm really scared, but no. We break through, we knock out Jardos and his last Pokemon course being Landers isn't a Fred and Mora already crossed it on the screen on the left side, huh? That was that was kind of policy. But but yeah, at that point I think I had a game under control and um, like I said, had it flinched me there, there was no way neither Absol nor Ninetales would have been able to survive because I lacked Sucker Punch on Absol and that would have been absolute massive had I lost the game due to that. But we win this game 3-0 um, and I would say a rather fair trio would give it the circumstance. So, I want to leave the game with a few afterthoughts and just the situation that's coming forward for this matchup. First and foremost, gotta say to Blazing that he played this game very well in the beginning. Um, me losing Stommy, losing Hero Cross early, uh, not getting anything out of my Venusaur, that's just on me. Like, that's Blazing pushing me very, very far back. The only reason I win is because I am a full cover in the Thunderous and he has no. Special attackers really besides Vicavolt to push that Pokemon back with Dianchi Lost and uh, it worked very well for me due to that, it really is that simple. Um, and the set itself, I mean, I probably could have won earlier had I had the right set, I really, really want to enforce that. Um, while saying still that even if that were true, um, I could still miss Fly and whatnot, but me not having Defiant is... The reason this game takes a lot longer than it should have. I was in a good position. I had a game idea, but that just backfired with, of course, all of this. Uh, but eventually it worked out anyway, so I guess I'm happy for that. But had I lost due to a missed Jenny, yeah, that would have been... I would have, I would have definitely been, well, disappointed at myself, if anything. Uh, so with that said, really make sure to check out Blazon. It's a really, really good kind of creator and enjoy watching his games quite a lot myself. And uh, yeah, join us on Sunday where we're going to upload against Aaron and Rome Empoleons. He is probably one of the few teams that are left now that are unbeaten. So even though we're only two games in, I mean, that's... we, we got to break those cycles somehow. So with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.